Every year, millions of birds fly over Beijing. I love the birds of Beijing. China's so lucky to have these creatures living here. You cannot have a strong economy without a strong environment. So that's really what motivates me and I try to play a small role in that. This is a Beijing Yu Yen. So this bird is, is really evolved for life in the air. It eats in the air and it even sleeps in the air. How? How does it sleep in the air? When they leave Beijing, they go... Male Hu Chao, no visa, <laughs> My name's Terry Townsend and I'm a British uh, wildlife conservationist and fellow of the Paulson Institute. So today we, we're taking some local families, um, introducing them to bird watching along the Wenyu River. So in autumn, lots of birds are moving south from their more northerly breeding grounds to their wintering grounds. So I first came to China in 2010, and at that time I was working for an NGO, a non-government organization, working on environmental law. It was in 2009, China was going to begin to develop a general law on climate change. As I was leading that work at the time, I came to China. When I first came to China and started to explore, I was pretty shocked what I saw in terms of how much wildlife you still have in China. And of course in northeast you have the tiger, the Siberian tiger and the Amur leopard. So back in my country in the UK, you know, we haven't had wolves roaming the countryside for more than 300 years. The other thing that shocked me was just how many birds, the volume of birds. I think probably it's around 900, something like that. So in Beijing, I've seen about 430 different species, which is more than I ever saw in all of the UK. Beijing, we think this city, full of people, it's full of cars, it's full of noise, but actually there is a lot of wildlife around us in this city. We have mammals, we have deer, we have leopard cats. There are very few capital cities that have wild cats. So we set up a sound recorder on the roof of this building here, the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank headquarters. It's 15 stories high. Um, and over the last year or so, we started a new project to try to get an insight into this incredible migration that happens at night. And today, we're gonna to go up to the roof to get the sound recorder, download the latest files, and see what birds we've been able to record over the last few weeks. It's done. Now we can go and check the files. Olive bat pipit, skylark, silver throated tit, and spotted red shank. And you never quite know what you're going to get with these files. You hear that? So this one is quite a rare bird in Beijing. This is a little curlew. Uh, and so this weekend, I'm gonna go with some friends uh, to a wetland area on the outskirts of Beijing. And who knows, if we're lucky, we might get to see one of these little curlews. So everyone wants to protect what they love, but they can only love what they know. I went to the to Qinghai, to the Tibetan Plateau, and uh, in Sanjiang Yuan, the local people. 
and they live alongside predators like snow leopards, leopards, wolves, bears. They're looking after these places. You know, they're, they're the stewards of these places. They set up infrared cameras. They send that data back to the, to the scientists at Peking University. In the last 10 years, there has been a strengthening of environmental laws. And then I think we have a chance to build more support for environment protection. This is my friend Zoe. <laughs> Now on the rooftop project earlier we uh, picked up a little curly which is a pretty rare bird so if we're really lucky we might see one today. And I know that back in 2000 there were only three bird watching societies in China. Today there are over a hundred. So I think that illustrates the, the growing interest in bird watching and nature among the Chinese population. I'm a designer. I actually designed a, a birding game. So at the time, I didn't know a lot of people in this industry or know mm. anything. So I somehow I discovered Terry's website, uh, Beijing Birding. <laughs> He's a great person with a lot of love with nature. Very agreeable. <laughs> I haven't paid you, have I? <laughs> Tell me the species we have seen already today. Good question. Um, let me check. So, 39 so far. 39 already? Yeah. That's so not bad. it's not too bad, yeah. yeah. Nature is the best show on earth. It's full of incredible stories. Um, but over the last 10 years, we've seen a shift away from economic growth at all costs towards higher quality growth. Um, and that means recognizing that you cannot have a strong economy without a strong environment. And I think we've got to tell those stories discovering those stories and including people in those discoveries.